Sometimes God just moves so quickly on you. And um, this morning it was in our leadership class, and, and we was talking out of the book of Genesis, the ninth chapter. And I want to go there because uh, I want to explore a little bit more. And my topic today is harvesting, harvesting the grace, harvesting under grace, or gathering, harvesting under grace. Genesis 9, chapter, verse 20 through 27. We're going to stand for the first verse. You may be seated afterwards. But harvesting under the grace. And, and Noah began to, and began to be an husband, and he planted a vineyard. You may be seated, praise God. And he planted a vineyard. And then the Bible says he drank of the wine, verse t- um, 22, uh, 21, I'm sorry. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And I want to pause there for a moment because, you know, a lot of time we have given Noah a bad rep. You know, I heard a song saying, and Noah was a drunk. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible say he drank of the wine and he was drunk. It doesn't say that uh, Noah was drunk any other time. So how do we got him being a drunker and being just drink got drunk one night? He drunk of the he ate of the first fruit. He tasted of his vineyard. And can you imagine being on a ship for all these months and then all of a sudden you ain't had nothing and then you drunk a little bit? It's like Janelle right now. She drank a little bit of wine and it goes straight to her head. Why? Because she hadn't drunk anything in five years. Right? But yet still, a lot of times, people want to label you to your worst moment. I wish I had an amen somewhere up in here. He's saying he drank of the wine and was drunken. If you drink enough wine, you're going to get drunk too. But that don't make you a drunk. Now, if you keep on drinking of that wine, then you become a drunk. So I just think he was misrepresented, uh, him being a drunk. And, and guess what? Him being drunk wasn't a sin. Uh-oh. Because this is before the law. Moses had come to establish the law yet. So y'all need to be Bible scholars a little bit. Y'all, 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 y'all got to read in context. He said uh, he was not a drunker yet. But he got drunk from the wine. Bible say in Genesis 6 and 9 that Noah was a man and he was perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Do that sound like a drunker? We're going to leave that alone then. Praise God. He said these are the generation of Noah. And Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. A lot of times we like to we like to make people into their worst moment. Into their worst failure. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Just cuz they mess up once don't mean they're going to mess up always. But because you don't put a label on them, you look for them to mess up. Ooh, hallelujah. Praise God. But watch this. Let, let, let's, let's go on. Let's go on. Go. So why do we look for the worst off a single incident? Because we always thinking that people can't be better than their worst moment. But if that's the case, you will never be safe. We all had had a worst moment in here. And thank God we didn't remain there. Come on, hallelujah. I heard someone say, I had a lot of worst moments. And thank God I ain't labeled by all those worst moments. Thank God the blood, grace, covers me. And here's the part. Watch. Go, go, go back. Go, go to verse 3. Go 23. I'm, I'm 22, sorry. And Ham 
the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers without. So Noah wasn't sinful, but Ham was. And the reason why Ham was sinful is that Ham exposed his father's nakedness. In other words, it's the sinful, he revealed the sin of it, and he exposed someone's weakness or their vulnerable, and that made it sinful. Instead of covering him, he exposed him. That's, what, that's the problem with America now. That's the problem with people right now. They rather expose you than cover you. They don't want to pray. They don't want to help. They don't want to minister to you. They want to condemn you. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. He saw him at a vulnerable state. I mean, come on. This is the same man who saved him. Oh, y'all missed that. Was not Noah the prophet of God at the time? Was he not prophesying to everybody, come and help me build this boat. The rain is about to come. They don't even know what rain was. But yet still he prophesied to us and he saved eight souls. And then one of those souls condemned him. What it all? Come on, hallelujah. It's amazing, hallelujah, how people forget all your good and look at your one bad. I'm trying to help somebody up in here. Because we harvesting under grace. You can't harvest if you ain't walking up under grace. How you expect to draw souls to the kingdom of God if you don't walk up under grace? But watch this. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and did what? Laid it upon both their shoulders and they went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And the reason why they went backwards, because they always remember him when he was upright. Mm, come on. Backwards. He was, they were walking backwards. That means they were looking not at what he was doing then, but what he had already done. Mm. You got to change your focus. Tell someone to change the focus. You got to see where God want them to be at, not where they are right now. Now, I'm going to get to that in a moment. It's going to bless you. I promise you it's going to bless you. And, the co and cover the nakedness of their father, and their face were backwards, and they saw not their father nakedness. In other words, they didn't see the vulnerability of their father. They didn't see the weakness of their father. Hallelujah. They saw that their father brought them through a storm, brought them through a, a, a flood. Not that he went and drunk some wine off his own vineyard. Now, don't take this to run with it, me telling y'all go get drunk. Let's clear all that up. This is, this is not uh, my approval on you going out there and buying you some wine. See, there you go. Somebody will run off and hurt. That's the only part that hurt. <laughs> They, they forgot about the part now laid on that Mo Noah was used as an example. Amen. Hallelujah. That when you get too much wine in you, it'll mess you up. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. It'll make you weak. Ooh. And so Noah woke. Watch this. And Noah woke from his wine. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, he came up out of what he was weak in. But see, what you done done is you done condemned him so you never seen when he came back up. And Noah woke from the wine and knew that his younger son had done unto him. What his younger son had done unto him. In other words, you know when somebody been talking about you. When you fell on low time. Because when they see you like, oh, you still alive? I thought you was dead. So you are right there spreading that I was dead when I was still alive. You wasn't praying for me. And he knew something had happened. That the relationship had changed. Oh, when you start talking about folks, folks know when you're talking about them. And you try to smile up in their face and act like you don't know. They know you've been talking about them. You need to check your mouth. Because diarrhea come out. Let that graphic go into your head for a moment. 
And he said, and curse be Canaan. Watch this. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. You know why he was a servant of servants? When you got something that you think is holding someone down, you become a servant to that thing. When you got a lie on somebody, hallelujah, you got some hot news on somebody, you become a servant to it. The person that move on, you still stuck there. You can't get beyond it. Ooh, I'm helping somebody. They might don't want to say amen, but I'm helping. Praise God. Watch this. And Canaan shall be his servant. Hallelujah. Because you're a servant to seeing people at their lowest point. Hallelujah. Not at exalted point. You can't see beyond where God want to take them at. You can only see them at their present state. But I see you greater than where you are. What the need of me praying for you if I can't see you better than where you're at now? I'm praying against my prayer. If I'm always looking at where you are now, I know I used to be in that spot too, but I done moved on. Watch this. And God shall do what? And he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant, right? And then he goes on and said, God shall enlarge your fat, and he shall dwell in the tent of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Hallelujah. So all those people who talking about you, they're going to end up serving you. Just trust God in the situation. You ain't got to fight that battle no more. Let God fight it for you. You just repent and go on. And leave people to worry about what you repenting on to themselves. Now, 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 now. I'm almost finished. Watch this here. I, 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 God give me revelation. I don't know how he works, y'all, but whatever I'm doing, he shows me revelation. Now, my mom, she, she decided that she was, she was working in the church, and she was cleaning up, and, and she saw a, a bucket, and it had pecans in it. And, and when you see something that you like, you want some. And she came up there, and she passed by me. I was out there picking up pecans. And, 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 and uh, she stopped, and she was like, uh, can I get some of your pecans? You know that high-pitched voice she had? And, and I was like, uh, I, in my head, I was like, yeah, there's a tree right in the corner. <laughs> but I was like, no, no, no. I got to give grace, right? So I went, and, and I, 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 I said, yo, you go ahead and get that. Can, can, can I get my little pecan picture? Where y'all move the thing at? Good Lord. I tell y'all, y'all got to stop moving stuff. Good Lord, help me, Jesus. I, they, they just messing my demonstration up. <laughs> so I'm out there picking up pecan, and she trying to take some away. But I told her, go ahead and pick up some pecan. So I decided, okay, you know what? And in the process of doing that, because I opened up with grace, God gave me grace. He gave me the grace of revelation. And while I was picking up, I realized something. That when you're picking up pecans, sometimes the pecans you're picking up is on the ground. And when they're on the ground, that means what? They done fell out the tree, which means they are ready for harvest. The stuff that's on the ground is ready for harvest. Y'all ain't catching this. There's some people out there that's done fell down that are ready for harvest. You looking at the fact that they're on the ground, but they are ready for harvest. If you just take the time to harvest them, if you take the time to pick them up. And some of them have fallen from great heights. And more, guess what? You ever look at a pecan tree? Them pecan fall from a great height, but they don't crack. Most of them don't crack. They fall, but they don't crack. But if they do crack, guess what? You won't have to worry about breaking them open. But then there's another revelation he gave me. He said the higher the fall, the more likely they are to break. So don't exalt yourself so big, hallelujah, that when you do fall, hallelujah, you will break. The one at the top of the tree more likely going to break than the one at the bottom of the tree. 
whew, all right. But then he showed me another thing, uh, 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 Brother Yosef. He say, they blend in the surrounding. When I'm out there picking up PK, sometimes I walk over them. Now I'm looking for them now. Watch this. I, I'm looking for PK, but then I walk over them. I have to take another angle in order to see it. Just because you missed it the first harvest, just because you walked over the first time, if you would take another look, oh, y'all don't want to talk up in there. If you would just take another look, you might see something you ain't saw before. Well, I done went to all my family members. I done went to everybody on my job. Well, it's time for you to go around again. I was walking around. And I done picked up, and I was like, okay, these are all the pecan. I don't see any more. But I had overlooked them. And the Lord said, look again. And when I look again, I picked up more than I picked up the first time. Because I'm walking up under grace. If someone was out there, hallelujah, that will walk out one more time, hallelujah, maybe you would have found me. Hallelujah, if you walk out there one more time, maybe you'll find that person who needs you. I thank God whoever led me to Christ, hallelujah, didn't just stop one time. But they look again. And because they look again, they found me. So because my mother-in-law got my pecans like that, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick her some. So I got a bag. I said, look at that. She ready for them too. A harvest just for her. But guess what? Hallelujah. Because I picked up the pecan. Give me Matthew's ninth chapter, verse 37 and 38. And he said, then say here unto the disciple, the harvest truly is plenty. There's a lot of folks on the ground. There's a lot of folks in vulnerable state. There are a lot of people that's in weakness. There are a lot of people that fell down and waiting for you to come pick them up. He said, the harvest truly plenty, is, but the labors are few. I was riding around town looking at pecan trees. I was like, all these pecan trees, ain't nobody picking them up. It's God harvest. So, I, you know, when I was at y'all age, young people, I was at y'all age, man, I would go around and pick up pecans and sell them. Ooh, who? My kids know that. Now they got a story about pecans. When I'm dead and gone, they can say, you remember when daddy used to have us out there on our knees <laughs> early in the morning, in the cold, picking up pecans? Didn't know I was trying to teach them that God has a promise for you if you look for it. God got a blessing for you if you'll make an effort. Everybody want things just to fall out the sky for them. How well it's falling out the tree for you? And you still won't pick it up. I used to tell my children, I said, God has blessed this land we own. Because I asked that wherever my feet may tread, that God would bless it. And you gave me four pecan trees in my yard. And I don't supposed to harvest it? Just let them go to waste? You know what? By the fact that I picked them up, look what I got. You just never know when you pick up pecans, you might end up with some healthy snacking pecan maple flavor. Here you go, and catch. Can you catch? Yay! Oh, wow. See, you never know what your harvesting is going to bring in. Ooh. Whoa, what is this? Pecan swirls. Ooh, look at this. All because I pick up some pecans, I got some pecan swirl. Ooh, now y'all like, what's else in the bag? Mm -hmm. Pecans. Bunch of pecans up in there. But God still got another blessing. Hallelujah. Can I get my blessing? Praise God. Hallelujah. See, we just don't know what's in store. What you bringing in, what you harvesting, hallelujah, just need to add some stuff to it to make it better. Oh, hallelujah. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Not only do pecan just have pecan, but it also have 
butter pecans. Ooh, she said, come on, 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 come on. Look at it. You, you like butter pecans? Oh, look at that. There you go. Ooh. Now, I got to say this for my glory right here. Now, anybody like pecan ice cream? Ooh, look at this. I, I'm going to tell you, uh, you won't have to share this with Kusi. All right. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But what I'm trying to show you is that when you start going out and working up on the grace, you can harvest more. You looking at a regular pecan. This one you looking at. Now, what we don't want is the effort. Y'all don't want to talk right now. We don't want the effort, but if you make an effort, God will give you an invention. Look at this. Go ahead and pick them all up just like that. And then you just dump them over. But you worry about, oh, man, all them pecan ain't got pick up. I want some, but I don't want to pick none up. Y'all want the church to be full, but you won't go harvest. Oh, you don't want to talk right there. You want some souls to be saved, but you don't want to do nothing. Oh, 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 I, I want the pecan squirrel. Oh, I want the pecan, maybe a pecan. I, I want the ice cream. You want all this stuff, but if you go out there and harvest, you don't know that's what you're harvesting. See, that's blessing in the harvest. Pecan pie. I was trying to find some pecan pie, but it looked like uh, mom going to have to make some with all them pecans she getting. Can, can, can I get you help right here? Come on. Put, put those in the bag. You can dump them out. Thank you, son. Both of y'all. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. So now that we about to bless her with some pecan, now who knows whether the pecan pie going to come back? Look at that. Got another one working. Oh, this God working right now. How Because he see his father doing it. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Because he, he see his father doing it. He said, look here. Now he's training his son. You don't think the kids watching what you do. They watch whether you praying. They watch whether you reading your word. They watch whether you, uh, how you talk to people. Whether you show grace. Whether you show love. Yeah, it was like, is there any more to do? Come on, we got some more to pick up. That's how God wants us to work. You don't know how you can inspire somebody else by you going out on faith and walking up under the grace you already received. Give me something quiet. I'm about finished right now. The Lord said the blessing was that there was pecan pie, but you couldn't see the pie. There was pecan praline, but you couldn't see the praline. There was pecan swirls, but you couldn't see the swirls. There was pecan ice cream, but you couldn't see the ice cream. Only thing you saw was the work. But the harvest was ready for you. When I look back and, and, and I see this, I saw that Shem and Japheth, they ministered grace to their father. People are going to fall from great levels, from different levels. Each pecan falls from a different level. All pecans are not on the same level. And you can't treat them all just the same. Just know that they're ready to be plucked. Just know that they're ready to be harvested. Only thing you have to do is gather it. When you got them pecans in your mouth, you don't care where they fell from. Come on. So why are we judging folks based on where they fall at? If they fell in alcoholism, if they fell in drug, if they fell in promiscuous sex, they fell in betrayal, they fell in hurt, they fell in depression, they fell in suicidal thought, they fell in all these things, but yet still you judging them instead of picking up the harvest by the grace God has given you. Before you got saved, you needed someone to harvest you with great yes so therefore the Lord showed me that the problem we have is that we focus too much on the work and less on the grace 
if grace was given to you, you should give grace back out. And then God will begin to reveal to you. I went in that store, and I was walking through and trying to find anything that had pecans in it. Because we don't know what the mix God going to use this person for. <laughs> Every pecan don't go in the ice cream. Every pecan don't go in the, to a swirl. <laughs> some pecan just eating that by itself. And some is mixed with other stuff. You ever had a trail mix? A pecan stands out, just like all other nuts. Come on, hallelujah. Y'all looking at all other nuts, but oh, this is a nut too. And so we just don't know what God is going to do with the person he's getting you to minister to. If you would just take, tell someone, just take another look. Maybe your husband rejected you when you ministered the word to him, but take another look. Maybe your sister or brother rejected you when you ministered the word, but take another look. Maybe there was some cousin at your family reunion. How little they rejected you, but take another look. Everybody is not the same people in that crowd the last time you went to it. The last time you went to the tree. Y'all know the tree we got in everybody's yard? where the saved folks in the house and the people who are not saved is around that tree. You know, the tree where we drink at, smoke at, lie at, and do all other stuff at. That tree, those people around that tree changes. But you don't judge that tree every time they walk in the yard. You just think it's the same folk. But guess what? They are ready for the harvest. That is a soul that we can snatch from the kingdom of darkness. Bring them into the kingdom of light while you're resting on your feet. I guess you won't look at a pecan again the same way, but I hope you don't. You know, in the process of picking up pecans, I also picked up some leaves. In the process of picking up pecans, I also picked up some pecan hurl. But I learned that I can clean that up. I can pick those off. Hallelujah. Don't worry about how they come in, how they dressed up, what they're covered in. Hallelujah. The word got a way of cleaning things up. One thing I learned about pecans, if you ain't got a tool to pick them up, you got to get down on your knees. Woo. The best way to get pecans is down on your knees. I ain't talking about natural. I'm talking about spiritual right now. I'm talking about soul. The best way to get them is down on your knees. Pray to the Lord God. Ask him to direct your footstep where you need to go. Order your footstep to the people you need to minister to. And he will direct your path. And when you walk over him, he'll tell you to turn around. And you see from a different angle. It's amazing I walk over the same pecan several times before I pick it up. But I come to tell you, I picked it up. I may have walked over you before, but I pick it up now. Hallelujah. I might have missed you the last time, but I pick you up now. And that's how you need to have that mindset. Look here, I might have overlooked you the last time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I was inside a manufacturing facility, and I was walking from the engineering apartment, and I was going out to lunch. And there was this young lady. Hallelujah. She was over there working on a sander, and I was passing through. And every morning, every day when I go out, I'll be witnessing someone because I'll be praying, Lord, put someone in my pathway. Put someone in my my pathway that I may minister to and I was on my way talking to someone and one day the girl came up and she said I got a question for you she said why you ain't never stopped to talk to me I said I, I, I said I apologize hallelujah I didn't realize I had offended her she said you talk to everybody else about Christ but you never came to talk to me this young lady end up getting saved in that same year. Next, before the next year, she done marry a minister, and they in the church ministering the Lord. But here I'm passing over a pecan. 
Because it didn't look like the other pecans. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. I already had my prejudgment about this particular person. And didn't know this woman started leading other folks to Christ. We got, we, we, we got to take that mindset off. When you come up under grace, let grace cover you. Let you see people through grace eyes. He loved us when we didn't even love ourselves. Before we even knew him, he loved us. Even when we was in our sinful state, he loved us. He didn't look at us in all our mess, but he said, I can see through your mess. Hallelujah, if I just clean you up. That's the God we serve. Who else would send his only begotten son for us? Because he saw ice cream. And then he saw a little swirl. He saw a little praline. If I could just get Patricia, she's just a praline. You see them pretty praline eyes? You just don't know how God want to use you. If this word has found you, the Bible said the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. If you feel like you're a laborer and you have not been laboring, come to this altar. He said, well, who's supposed to be laborers? The Bible said go out into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that means that all of us should be laborers. If you're not laboring like you should be laboring, come now. Hallelujah. I need you praying, Ann. I need you praying, Talia. I need you praying. Hallelujah. As my wife is anointing, we're going to break off that slowfulness, that procrastination. We're going to break off that condemnation, that judgment attitude. We're going to break that. We're going to break that in the mighty name of Jesus. Your distorted vision, your blurry vision, we're going to break that too that you may see not by sight but by faith of what God want to do when that young man brought me to Christ he didn't know I was praline he didn't know whether I was swirl or not he didn't know whether I was but a pecan or not he didn't know what I was but he knew I was a pecan that God wanted to harvest he didn't come with any preconceived idea of what I was supposed to be. He just knew I need to be in the kingdom of God. Raise your hands around this altar. It's never too early to begin to minister for the Lord. It's never too early to draw unto the Lord. First and foremost, Father, forgive us of our transgressions. There may be something that's around this altar right now who needs to repent and ask you to come into their hearts and transform them that they may receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And they need to believe that he died for their sins and was resurrected on the third day. And believe that he is resurrected now in their hearts. And they will renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, darkness, cast it out of their life right now, Lord. And let them always gravitate towards the light. Pour into them, Lord, your anointing, your Holy Spirit. And we thank you right now for saving them, Lord. Deliver them and setting them free, Lord. And Father, now we ask that you would urge you in a spirit of laboring right now, oh God. You call us to be servants, oh Lord. You say the laborers are few, but the harvest is plenteous. There's more unsaved than there are saved, folks, Lord. And we thank you right now, O oh God, that you will stir up the gift within us, O oh Lord. 
that we would have a compassion for people, Lord. Not to judge them, oh God, because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Lord, we thank you right now, oh God, that we won't look at them through blurry vision, oh God, but we'll look at them the way you look at us, oh Lord, that you forgive us even though we were in sin, Lord. We thank you right now, oh God, for transforming our minds right now, oh God, that when we look again, oh God, we'll see them as you saw them, oh God. Not like the man who saw men as trees, oh God, but see men as men, oh God. God, I thank you for them being able to see that it's a soul that needs salvation salvation. It is a soul that needs deliverance. It's a soul that needs healing, Lord. Lead them right now, God. Put, your, put an urging on the inside. A longing on the inside for souls to be saved, Lord. That it will move them, even when they don't feel like being moved, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. I thank you right now, oh God. That they will have a mind to pray, oh God. Hallelujah, not speak against, but pray, Lord. That they will have a mind to intercede, oh God. Get in between darkness, hallelujah, and that person they're trying to get saved, oh Lord. That they will rebuke darkness. Rebuke wickedness, oh Lord. And pray and intercede on their behalf that they will hear your voice as you call unto them, Lord. God, use them as instruments for your glory. Father, I thank you right now, oh God. Put anointing upon their life right now, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God, that we need to break chains in people's lives right now, Lord. Father, I thank you for a fresh anointing falling upon them right now. Come on, receive it right now. You need to receive it by faith right now. You need to receive it by faith right now. Hallelujah. He's transforming the way you speak. He's transforming what you say. Hallelujah. Your heart shall be filled with joy and the love of the Lord. Renew within them the right spirit, Lord. And Lord, I thank you right now, oh God. For the harvest is truly plenteous. And we shall labor in our part of the vineyard, Lord. Without complaint, without murmuring, without grumbling, Lord, we shall do it without being weary, Lord. Because in due season, we shall reap. And Lord, I thank you right now for the reaping that shall take place. For each soul that's around this altar right now, oh God, for the souls you have assigned for them to lead unto the kingdom, oh Lord, I thank you right now, oh God. Let it be sealed by your Holy Spirit right now. And this we claim in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I will never be the same again. Zacharias, y'all know him? Come down out of that tree. The Bible said when he got saved, the tax collector, when he got saved, the Bible say he, he went back and everybody he wronged, he gave them four folds. <laughs> He said, I gave back four times what I took from them. He said, truly salvation has come to this house. <laughs> See, when salvation comes, when, when you truly hear and move within the Spirit of God, there should be a visible transformation upon you that people will know there's a difference. He started witnessing the folks. Can you imagine what they were saying? Wow, the tax collector giving back money? Wow, that shall be how they are with you, to be surprised that you're doing something different than you normally do. Well, you used to cuss them out. You don't cuss them out no more. Well, you used to lie on them. You don't lie on them no more. 
When you used to grumble and complain about it and say, you ain't nothing, you ain't no good, now you don't say that anymore. I'm praying for you that one day God is going to come in and move upon you. You ain't got to get the last word no more. Let him be the last word. Let your life living be the last word. If you walk in the call, that will be all you need to do. Just live a life exemplifying God.